Hello, my dear viewers. We will talk about angina today. Today we'll discuss angina beyond the stethoscope, right? And angina further. That means first angina is there is a mismatch between supply and demand. Oh, wait a minute. Am I discussing marketing? No, this is medicine and it's about heart problem angina, right? What is the supply and demand? Heart muscle is the one which contracts and which enables heart to pump out blood adequately into the system. And this muscle is unique capability is it's, it does not get exhausted. If there is a continuous supply of energy and oxygen and glucose into the muscle, it contracts and relaxes rhythmically and maintain a good cardiac output. But what happens in angina is there is a supply and demand imbalance, right? And what is this demand for any contraction of a muscle like other muscles of the body, like your muscles in the arms or legs, heart muscles also need energy, that is glucose and oxygen basically, oxygen for metabolism of this glucose, right? And an ATP production, which gives the energy for the contraction. And what happens in angina is there is reduced blood supply. And if I would explain further, what would you think which will happen when the heart needs to contract faster and when the heart need to contract stronger? That means the demand for oxygen and glucose and energy goes up when the heart beats faster. That means demand of these things will increase. When the demand increases and supply should increase, otherwise heart muscles can get exhausted and it will not function at their best and contractility can go down, even heart muscles can go into death, right? This is what is explained by angina. Then in the heart muscle, what are the blood vessels which supplies the heart? That is named as coronary arteries. Coronary arteries supply blood to the heart that maintains this continuous supply and demand balance because this blood transported through these blood vessels transports oxygen and glucose as we discussed before to supply to these muscles to maintain the metabolism. And what happens if there is a block or narrowing of that kind of artery? There will be a supply and demand mismatch. In that case, the ideal nature of the heart muscles may change. That means they can become exhausted and they can not work at their best. That means they can't contract, they can't maintain the cardiac output, right? Therefore, what happens in angina, right? You just imagine when you run, when you're climbing up a staircase, when you are at emotional stress, there is an adrenal surge. That means there is sympathetic activity. In simple terms, a whole lot of hormones pump out into the blood and nerves give signals to the heart to beat faster. That means a lot of signals come into the heart. You have to beat faster. But you have the heart has got the order and signal, but they need, they need oxygen and glucose and production of energy to give these muscles to contract faster. So it needs more blood flowing in to bringing in oxygen and glucose. But what happens if there is a block then it can't contract, it can't fast, it can't maintain the faster rate of contraction. Therefore, the heart can't give that energy, heart can't pump out that blood. Then what happens? The peripheral organs like your brain and the arms, the muscles of the arms, legs, it will not get proper oxygen supply because adequate blood can't be pumped by the heart because there is a block in the blood vessel in the heart. Therefore, you, when you try to walk faster, try to climb, climb up a staircase, or when you are at emotional stress, 
you can feel breathless because lungs also do not get adequate blood supply to maintain oxygenation, right? Therefore, primary problem in angina in a blood vessel, a tiny little blood vessel, a coronary artery in your heart, which causes inadequate contraction of the muscles of the heart because there is no adequate supply of, inner, of glucose and oxygen to the heart muscle. And heart, in turn, heart can't maintain adequate blood supply to the lungs and other tissues, brain, and you will feel energy, less energy, breathless, and other important symptom is when you try to exert, when you try to increase the demand of blood circulation, when there is obstruction or when there is occlusion of the blood vessel in the heart, it causes reduced supply of blood into the heart muscle and in turn heart reduced cardiac output. Therefore, for the whole body, heart can't maintain the supply requirement. Therefore, at the heart level and, and the system levels, in the body level, there is a there will be a supply and demand mismatch which causes angina and ultimately it gives rise to pain because what is called pain actually pain is feature of inflammation right inflammation inflammation can cause pain redness swelling and also warmth at the level of heart the primary problem is there is narrowing of a coronary vessel and therefore, they, therefore, there is reduced blood supply. When heart beats faster, it can't give blood supply. That is, the supply demand mismatch is caused is called ischemia. All right, ischemia is an injury form of an injury. It can cause some inflammation. Right, that can give rise to pain when they supply demand mismatch at the heart level which is called angina right when you try to walk when you try to exert yourself and try to climb up a staircase when you try to walk faster when you try to walk longer distances this demand increases supply goes down there is a mismatch and injury and and caused by ischemia and causes angina okay right now we are at the topic, at the climax of the topic discussion. That means now we know the cause for angina. And why this narrowing of a blood vessel occurs? It is due to atherosclerosis that is called